Hi, everyone. So I did my paper on para ice hockey and my presentation on para ice hockey. So para ice hockey, the rules for para ice hockey are very similar to ice hockey. The main things that are different, instead of a 20 minute period, it's 15 minute periods. And instead of 10 minute intermissions like ice hockey, they get 15 minute intermissions. Uh, Overtime is also a little bit different. So I don't know what the intermissions are for overtime for ice hockey. I forget, but um, there's a three minute intermission for power ice hockey. And then it will be followed by a five minute period. Uh, if it's like a championship or something, it might be 10 minutes instead for the period. And OT for power ice hockey is four on four instead of three on three, like ice hockey. Um. And for the shootout, there's no intermission if it goes to shootout after overtime. And the overtime, the way the overtime works is it's just sudden death. So whoever scores first takes the win. And then if there's no score, obviously it goes to shootout. Um, one thing that's also different is for ice hockey, I think the team limit is 20 players or well, 20 people, like 18 players, uh, two goalies. But for para ice hockey, the limit is 13 players, actually, and two goalies. But if there's a female on the team or multiple females, then the limit is 14 players and two goalies. Um, Each team is allowed one timeout, a one-minute timeout, and it has offsides and icing just as regular ice hockey. So the classification for power ice hockey is pretty simple. There's only one eligible sport class, and that's just any athlete that has a lower body impairment. So the following impairments would uh, account for this. Leg length difference, limb deficiency, ataxia or athetosis, I think that's from, hypertonia, impaired muscle power, or impaired passive range of motion. So there's not really different uh, classifications. It's just they need to have one of these impairments to qualify. As far as equipment goes, there is uh, they will have full gear pretty much. So they'll have uh, elbow pads, shoulder pads, shin pads, gloves, uh, like hip pads. Uh, and they'll have a full cage helmet. So it's a little bit different than ice hockey where in the NHL or in like men's leagues or college, they might a lot of them have like a half mask. In this, it's everyone wears a full cage. Uh, and instead of one stick, one full length stick, they have two shortened sticks that will have a shooting end on one side of each of them, and then like a pick end for them to pull themselves across the ice. Um, players will also have a sled, like pictured right here, where their legs go into the, their feet go into the front, and they sit in the back. I, it'll have two blades on the bottom, and then a little thing up front to help it uh, glide across the ice. And then goalies paddings are just a little bit different than the players. So they'll still have a sled, but their shoulder pads will be larger and like more protective. And their leg pads will be like blocks and they'll also be more protective. And their helmets are like more enclosed around their head. So also more protection from that. And instead of just regular like gloves to hold their stick, they'll have a blocker glove and a catcher glove, just like regular ice hockey. Scoring, so anytime a puck crosses the goal line completely, it's one point. Uh, there's some cases where it might be called off. Uh, so some examples of scores in the past. In the 2021 World Para Ice Hockey Tournament, the U.S. scores were 1-2, to 4-0, 8-0, 9-0, and 5-1. to one. So as you can see from those scores, it's – Usually, gonna some of the scores are going to be higher than uh, just regular ice hockey. I mean, regular ice hockey, if you watch it all, sometimes you'll see seven, maybe. I mean, it, nowadays it's higher, but generally ice hockey is lower scoring than para ice hockey. Uh, penalties, there's a whole bunch of penalties listed here. Pretty much for the same part, like, same as uh, ice hockey. I don't think there's really any extra ones. 
they're all pretty much the same. They're all listed here. I'm not going to read them off because there's like 20 there. But, yeah, they're all pretty much the same as regular ice hockey. And the timing, they, uh, they also have minors and majors. So there's the timing for penalties is pretty much the same based on the severity. So the player that I picked to study was Steve Cash. He's also known as Money. So he had his right leg amputated when he was just three years old because of, I believe it's a form of cancer, it said, osteosarcoma. Um, so he was a goalie, a pretty crazy goalie, actually. He uh, is the first para-athlete in the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame. First, not just first para ice uh, athlete, first athlete in the Hall of Fame ever. Uh, he has three gold medals and one bronze medal, and he he has been in thirteen para hockey cups with eight wins. He's also been in eight world championships with five golds, two silvers, and a bronze, and he has been in several other. Uh, national, international events. I'm guessing he's probably been in a lot of regional events too to get there. So the reason I chose to do para ice hockey is because I played ice and roller hockey growing up. So I wanted to see how different it was. Um, I realized that adapted sports and activities can be very similar from this. Like ice hockey and para ice hockey are pretty much the same besides the equipment and obviously the way they have to move. But um, something else I also realized is it's probably a good idea to play sled hockey on scooters and PE. That's probably a good way for students to learn. And it can make it a little bit inclusive too. And that's all I have.